Live from the studio at the Northwest Florida School of Biblical Studies, this is Have a Bible Question, where you are part of the program. Now, let's go to the Bible for answers to your Bible questions. We got one from Eva Swain Sullivan. She says, I'm told that you cannot understand what the Bible really means unless the Holy Spirit helps you understand it. They say that is why people interpret the Bible differently because not everyone is being helped by the Spirit. What what do I say to this? Uh, you know, there are several passages that start to come to my mind. Uh, I, I love introducing questions because I, I watch these guys, their, their wheels are spinning, <laughs> and they're like, ooh, and they start turning to verses. And, and so I, I'll just kick it off as, as I – introduce this you know i think about paul's instructions to timothy and i know timothy did have spiritual gifts but that was separate from the idea of the uh the concept of of studying because what paul would write to timothy and he says give diligence to show thyself approved unto god a workman that needs not to be shamed rightly dividing the word of truth if he had to have the holy spirit why don't he just say pray that the holy spirit will show it to you why, why did Timothy need to show diligence? The responsibility was on Timothy there, not the Holy Spirit. And, and then I think of Acts 17. The Bereans were more noble than those of Thessalonica because they searched the Scriptures daily to see whether these things were so. Where was the responsibility? It was upon the individual, not upon whether the Holy Spirit showed it to him. And so this teaching is not consistent with the commands we have to search the Scriptures. Even at the point that it's kind of interesting, you may have to help me here about try the spirits. First John four one. All right, and that idea is you know that we have a responsibility to be searching. Uh, furthermore, even faith. So then faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. Mm, you yeah, know, yeah. it's not saying get faith by praying to the Holy Spirit that the Holy Spirit will give it to you. It's hearing the word. And we think about the sufficiency of it. We go to passages like Jude 3. And as that, uh, you know, I was using, uh, what, 1 Timothy 2.15 and 3.16.17. All scripture is given by the inspiration of God, profitable doctrine, reproof for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto every good work. He says the word, God's breathing that word. This, this right here can thoroughly equip you. I think where some people get uh, off track or get confused or, or get, uh, misunderstanding this is that they think that, you know, we read about the Holy spirit inspiring men. We mm-hmm. read about him helping the early first century disciples in the new Testament. And I think people get confused thinking that still applies to us today. Yeah. And it doesn't. And that that's, there's the difference. That was going to stop, right? Yeah. That was going to stop. We have several verses, like for example, first Corinthians chapter 13, verse you 10. Going there. You knew it. You knew it. That's why you threw it. That's like a, that was like a <laughs> lob softball right there. Um, because that which perfect comes, then these other things are going to be done away with. We don't, we don't need those anymore, but there's a verse that really stands out, Ava, that, uh, really is important to me. And it's in uh, Second Peter, chapter one, <laughs> verse twenty, says, "Knowing this first, that no prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation." I think that goes right to the heart of your question, right there. They say that people interpret the Bible differently because not everyone is being helped by the Spirit. Well, no. Uh, according to this, there is no private interpretation because it says in verse 21, prophecy never came by the will of man, but holy men of God spoke as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Going back to what I said at the beginning, that Holy Spirit moving men is not us. That's not, that's not available to us today. That was available to those disciples in the first century. People like Peter. Uh, if you can't see Peter being moved by the Holy Spirit, uh, or, or John or some of these others, you know, and the difference, and then that, that's where confusion comes and, in. And the confusion, and for clarification, I think what happens in verse 20 is they confuse verse 21 with verse 20. Mm-hmm. And the idea that verse 20 is saying, no, it's not of any private interpretation. There's a way, and that's from God because God moved these men. And so it's not just for you to, 
take it any way you want to is to take what God told them to say. And so it, it, it kind of, people can misalign what that saying is like, Oh, so we have to have the Holy spirit. Tell us what it is. No, the Holy spirit's already told these men. They, that's the key. The Holy spirit's already told us. And so you need to go and find what that interpretation is. It's not saying the Holy spirit's going to help you find that interpretation. It's just the Holy spirit gave it and you need to take it. Yeah. You and to- you quoted a couple of scriptures earlier tonight uh, Colossians, I think one five or something that says it's all been delivered. Jude three, uh, Jude three. Yeah. It's all been delivered. And, and so there are lots of other indications that we have everything that, well, the Bible says that right there in the same passage, right? Second Peter chapter one, verse three, and his divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him who calls by glory and virtue. We have everything. And if you add to it, is it first Corinthians chapter four, verse six, it says, do not think beyond that, which is written. Right. All right. So, I mean, there is no private interpretation that you don't wait for the Holy spirit to speak to you. You go to what the Holy spirit has delivered Mm -hmm. and and you go by this. This is how you determine what is written. Exactly. Jeff. And, uh, and I've heard this, uh, idea of the spirit needing to illuminate the truth where people would go to passages such as first Corinthians three and verse six. Now, Paul here is talking about, he's contrasting the old law with the new law, but he says, who also hath made us able ministers of the new Testament, not of the letter, but of the spirit for the letter killeth, but the spirit giveth life. And of course he's talking about, as he explains it in the, in the next couple of verses that he's talking about the difference between the old law, that which was, engraven in stones and then that which uh you know is written in the heart you know that that there is a a difference between the two and talked about moses when he gave it and uh and of course uh, uh later on and called it the ministration of condemnation and uh and he contrasted it with the ministration of righteousness uh in verse uh verse nine uh, so the site, just the wording there, the letter killeth, but the spirit giveth life. People have used that to say, well, the, the, the letter of the word needs to be illuminated by the spirit in order for us to understand it or be illuminated by it. Uh, you know, exactly. Okay. And that sounds like kind of like what, uh, she was asking, you know, that, uh, there are those who claim that you need that. Well, even I hope that gives that you a way. little bit of something to talk to them about, to kind of explain it uh, back to them. Um, you know, it's, it's really amazing to me how people really love the idea of the mystical and, and really can embrace embrace that. And it's almost like we search for that when I love the simplicity that, hey, here's a book. God's given it to us. It's written in a way we can understand it. And you search it and you start applying it. Um, and, and what's funny is so many people, and maybe this is judgmental. I hope it's not, but so many people that get so wrapped up about, you know, how do we understand, how do we interpret and stuff? They, they miss some of the most basic things like not lying, <laughs> uh, drunkenness is sin. Uh, you know, it, I'm not even picking the, the, you know, Christians are to be kind. Yeah. <laughs> well, let me give you a real world example. You know, if you, you know, a lot of people use coupons or I just learned the term BOGO. <laughs> Buy sorry. one, get one. Yeah, Andrea says that to me. I didn't know what that meant, but now I know. Bogo. Is it coupon or coupon? Coupon. I think it's it, coupon. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> you get a coupon, all right? And it says, you know, buy one, get one free gallon of milk at public supermarket. That's a good and deal. It's a very good deal. Well, I wish they had those kind of coupons. Now, if you take that coupon and you go down to the dollar store, or you go into the, the, uh, what's the, some of the ones around here, the seven 11s we have back home or something mm-hmm. like that, Tom thumb. And you take two gallons of milk to the counter and you give them that coupon. What are they going to say? That's not good here. That's not any good here. And what could I say? Well, that's just your interpretation. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't work. Does it? Nope. All right. No. If we understand that, why do we try to do that with the Bible? Yeah. I mean, it just, it it gets frustrating sometimes. Yeah. 